Hey, this is Peter Weigel of Fig by Fig, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to learn calculus properly. When you first learn calculus, some of you might know, you're usually taught limits. But limits are a mathematical abstraction of reality. They're hard to understand as a student, especially if you're learning it for the first time. So what I'm going to do today is take you way back in time to the first known use of calculus, all the way back in 300 BC. Now in 300 BC, there lived a man named Euclid. Some of you might know of Euclid because he is considered the father of geometry. He was the first person to compile all of the ancient Greek knowledge on geometry. But today we're gonna to talk about a slightly different problem that Euclid was looking at. Euclid wanted to figure out the area of a circle. Up to this point, the circumference was known to be proportional to the radius and it, that proportionality constant is as we know today, pi. 3.1415, etc., etc. But Euclid wanted to know the relationship between the area and the circumference. Now, in order to do this, he had to use an ancient method of calculus known as the method of exhaustion. And this is, as the name implies, quite exhaustive. But let me explain what I mean here. What Euclid did to determine the area of a circle was he took what he knew. What he knew was that the circumference is equal to 2 times pi times the radius of a circle for any circle. He didn't know what pi was, but he knew it was a constant value. And then he also knew the area of a triangle. Remember, this is the guy that literally wrote the books, multiple, on geometry. So he knew that an isosceles triangle has an area equal to 1 half times the height of the triangle times its base. So what he did was he said, well, we have a circle. What if we take 8 isosceles triangles and we put them next to each other in a circle. Well, you can see they kind of look similar, don't they? I mean, they're not perfect, but if you make the height of the triangle, the radius or close to the radius of the circle, you can see these become almost the same in area. Now, what if we go a step further? If we go a step further, and instead of having eight triangles, we have say 64, then you have a similar concept. You still have a bunch of small triangles making up your circle. But now you can see the area is getting even closer to the area of the circle. Now you might be thinking, well, I could go a step further, couldn't I? I could use an even higher number of triangles. And that's exactly the next step that Euclid looked at. He said, okay, what if I have some ridiculously large number of triangles? It doesn't have to be eight or 64 or any number, really. It can just be some large number and we'll call that number N. So N here just represents the number of triangles. And imagine that n is really, really, really large. A very large number n and a very small number b for the base. Well, if you do that, you can see just from these pictures that eventually a large enough number of triangles really approximates almost exactly the area of a circle. And an infinite number of triangles would approximate the area of a circle exactly. And so what we can say is that the circumference of a circle, which is equal to 2 pi r, is equal to n, which is the number of triangles, times the base of each triangle. In that case, we can take the area of the total number of triangles and relate that to the area of the circles. So now we can combine these two equations to come up with a final value for the equation of a circle with respect to the radius. And that is where we get a, for the area of a circle, is equal to pi r squared. Now this is a somewhat basic example because we're really just determining the area of a circle here. This is something that we all know, right? But I bet a lot of you didn't know how we knew that. Turns out it's over 2000 years old and it used an ancient form of calculus. In order to understand calculus properly or any idea, you have to think of it in terms of a concept, which we just did, and then the language of the idea. Now the rest of calculus, everything you learn from here on out, now that you know the idea of calculus, is going to be learning the language. Because calculus is all about adding and subtracting infinitely large things or infinitesimally small things, and sometimes both at the same time, as you saw here. But that's really all calculus is. It's advanced addition and subtraction, and you can do it just addition and subtraction, right? So that's it. That's the proper way to learn calculus. My name is Peter Weigel. If you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe below. And if you're looking for a course that can teach you how to get A's in all of your engineering classes in college, make sure to visit our website at figbyfig.com. I'll catch you in the next video.